Hey, what's up? So this week I'll be talking about Suicide Squad since it is a premiere and I just want to touch base on a few things that I'm thinking may or may not happen in the movie and just my overall thoughts about the film. I at first was not really excited about this movie only because like the character designs were kind of like not really I wasn't really feeling it and we'll see soon enough you know how these actors are playing these characters if they've done them justice which it looks like they are doing a lot of hype is being built around this movie and um from what I've seen so far you know just the little clips and trailers they've released it looks promising so um a lot of my doubt has died down but i mean then again we still have to see the movie but i'm very confident in it now at this point Suicide Squad, as you know, is kind of like Smoke and Aces in a way, only instead of assassins versus assassins, it's like villains versus villains. Anyways, um, let's get into the villains. Uh, at first, I thought Enchantress was going to be the main villain, but um, as we're getting closer to the film, it's looking like that's not the case. Then I thought the Joker, but that at the same time, it's just like, that doesn't really make sense because, you know, him and Harley have a thing, so it's like... It would be hard to be setting up Harley against, you know, her main thing, her main squeeze. Now, I mean, even more confidently, I think that it's definitely going to be Common, who we have not seen in any of the promo material. But he's definitely is going to play, I think, an essential role in this film as the main villain, who is rumored to be Monster T. Funny thing about Common is that he's also in Smoke and Aces which is a movie I could not recommend anymore. It's pretty fun. It's awesome. It's badass. It's everything you would want out of an action film. One thing that kind of had me low-key sad was that Tom Hardy was supposed to play Rick Flagg. And even though Tom Hardy's already played Bane, it still would be pretty cool to see him reintroduced into the DC universe now that it's going to be expanded. Being that it is the Suicide Squad, some people are definitely going to die. I've got my money on Slipknot. Um, no, not that. Slipknot, that's a band. I'm talking about this guy. No, that's Kicking Wing. Yeah, this guy right here. That's Slipknot. And um, I only think he's not going to make it through because he kind of doesn't really make it through even in the uh, promotional campaign material. Like, he kind of disappears at a certain point even through the campaign and, like, the trailers. So it's just like, where'd you go, man? Where did you go? Did you get tied up somewhere? No pun intended. Uh, the movie is going to be PG-13, which is, I guess, whatever. I just, I mean, I'd rather see it a rated R version for this cast of villains. Um, also, that's going to make it weird because I'm pretty sure there's a sex scene in this movie. So PG-13 sex scenes are awkward and no fun. One thing that's got me really into this movie also is the music. Um, I mean, obviously starting with like the Wayne's World soundtrack, in the uh, previews so far, we've got Bohemian Rhapsody and uh, Ballroom Blitz, which is just very reminiscent of that movie. And I don't know if that was intentional or what, but I like that it kind of bring back those memories from that movie. It's just great to see that music is influencing the film as well. Because I don't think we've had a movie in a long time. The last movie I can think of that had an actual soundtrack for the movie, like specifically for the movie, was probably School of Rock. And now we have a Suicide Squad album, which is dedicated to Suicide Squad. They got actual artists to make music to go along with the movie, which is awesome because I think music and film just go hand in hand. They really just feed off of each other. We got 21 Pilots who have a music video that's kind of similar to Limp Bizkit's, uh, one of Limp Bizkit's videos. Then we got a song with Wiz and Wayne. Uh, Imagine Dragons, Logic, and some other people, I guess, I don't know how many fucking 15 people are on that song. But I mean, I like the beat on that song. I don't really care much for everyone else. The Skrillex and Ross track is pretty garbage, so I'm not even going to get into that because that shit belongs in the basura. The one song I'm definitely looking forward to hearing that I haven't heard yet is Grimes' song. As you know, Grimes is a pretty big Harley Quinn fan. You know what's up, boo? We also got some vocal artists in the film, like Common, The Fresh Prince, and of course, Jared Leto. Speaking of music, we also have Harley Quinn, whose shirt reads, uh, Daddy's Little Monster, which I think is a reference to uh, Social Distortion's Mommy's Little Monster, which was a pretty cool track uh, way back in the day. 
And moving forward with Harley Quinn, we're finally getting our first live adaptation of Harley Quinn on film, which is pretty cool because I feel like she was a character that never got enough attention, but definitely is getting a lot of attention now. Uh, we're seeing so many people cosplay as her. Halloween is definitely going to be popping with Harley Quinns all over the place. Uh, we're also going to be getting her origin story, which looks very similar and reminiscent to Joker's uh, story, kind of like uh, from The Killing Joke. Um, we even get like a little bit of a little heart going on around them. Look at that. Oh, that's cute. It looks like their relationship is going to be portrayed slightly different in the sense that it looks like Joker's actually into Harley. Like he actually has like more of a heart on for her than in the comic books. Because if you know their relationship like via comics and even the old animated series i mean the joker was never really too into her like he was barely into her into her enough i guess but i think it's cool that david ayer is kind of putting the spin on it like that the joker is kind of more into harley quinn like he actually desires her because i feel like it's the story that we low-key all kind of wanted to see <laughs> i'm pretty sure we're all tired of like Joker being this abusive boyfriend to Harley Quinn. It's kind of cool to actually see him be more of like this uh, knight in shining armor. Even though Harley Quinn doesn't really need a knight, uh, she's kind of a badass on her own. But it's cool to see that we get a Joker who is like in love with her. <laughs> okay, so I'm confident in Jared Leto as an actor because everything he's been in is amazing. The only thing that's really bothering me about his Joker so far is just... I mean, obviously the tattoos, which are like super cheesy and corny, but I mean, they tried to justify it with all these kind of lame excuses. And then also his laugh, his laugh isn't really, it doesn't sound like a Joker laugh to me. I don't know if it's just me. <laughs> Hit me with your guys' thoughts on that, because that's something I definitely want to hear about. But I mean, I feel like Joker's supposed to have this like maniacal kind of hyena laugh. <laughs> <laughs> and from what I've seen in the trailer so far, it's just, I'm not feeling it, you know? Like Heath Ledger's laugh was obviously really, really dope. Like it was on point. <laughs> it was a pretty on point joker laugh uh, of course mark hamhill's laugh is legendary as well i just feel like pff, shit like even i could pull off a decent joker laugh <laughs> so i mean and i know i heard jared had tried out several different laughs and it's just weird that he's landed on the one that we've been hearing so far also through the credits i've noticed in imdb it looks like we're going to get Johnny Frost, who, as you guys may or may not know, is kind of like one of Joker's main henchmen, but only through a recent telling of uh, Joker's story, which is interesting because it kind of ties in uh, Christopher Nolan's universe into this universe because, okay, let me just, let me break this down. This is going to be the bonus round right here. Johnny Frost bonus round. Um... <laughs> Christopher Nolan's Dark Knight features, obviously, the Joker with Heath Ledger. But after the unfortunate death of Heath Ledger, we were obviously not going to get another uh, movie with the Joker. But we did get one comic book specifically dedicated to tell the story after the Dark Knight, which is simply called Joker. Um, it's by Brian Azzarello. And it's basically the story that would take place after the Dark Knight. And this is the comic book where Johnny Frost is introduced. So since we're getting Johnny Frost in Suicide Squad, it's technically linking from Brian Azzarello's Joker, which links us back to the Dark Knight. So in a sense, it's kind of a continuation from Christopher Nolan's film unintentionally. Or intentionally, I don't know, who knows. David probably threw that in there just knowing that some fans, some geeks, some nerds, people like me would try to connect those dots. Anyway, so I guess my last thoughts on this film. Branding, the branding was a little cheesy, but then they started getting some real artists to kind of 
work in some some cool graphic design work aside from those like middle school looking logos i've also made a little bit of a campaign thing myself for the suicide squad movie as you guys may know odd case is my brand where i sell a bunch of random shit so i made a limited edition uh button collection called odd squad which will be sold on my big cartel site um for odd case so go ahead and Grab some Odd Squad buttons from oddcase.bigcartel.com. Uh, remember, limited time only. And uh, I'm looking forward to seeing the movie. Let me know what you guys think of the movie after you've seen it. And I'll see you guys in the next episode of Necroflix.